Hey guys, I'm Benny. This is Skip on Slacklines, and today I want to teach you how to set up a slackline in your own garden. Right now, the coronavirus is going around, and I have to stay at home. Everybody has to stay at home, so there's no better way to spend your time than reading a slackline and learning how to slackline. I'm gonna try to use whatever I find at home and to build an anchor in the ground to rig my slackline. So let's do it. First thing you need to do is um, you need to check from where to where you rig your line. So this is my lawn here and I want the line to go just right across the lawn so I have like enough space on the left and the right side to jump down and like to fall and so on. And This is the place where I will build the anchor. It should be at least like one on one meter space uh, to rig uh, the line. First of all, I have to get rid of the plate. So we got a uh, Spaten. I don't know how you call this type of shovel in English, but in German it's called a, a Spaten. And this is a club Spaten. I can do this. Might be useful later if you want to dig very deep. So we gotta make a hole very deep. And starting to dig my hole. That's how it looks. It's actually surprising how much dirt comes out of a hole like that. So I did the second load of that. And yeah, just make sure to don't throw that stuff just on the side, because then uh, you will never be able to get rid of it afterwards. So keep it either on something like I put a cardboard, a cardboard under it, so I can put all the dirt that I put out of the hole. I can put it back into the hole again. Exactly. My hole is like that deep already. Like that deep. I want to get it like at least 10 centimeters more deep. And then I think we're deep enough to put stuff inside, put a sling around, and then it should be fine to at least have an all right tension on the line. It's not going to be a super tight trick line or anything like that, but it's for sure enough for walking, for a little bit of bouncing, like for what a normal person basically needs. The deeper the hole gets, the harder it's going to be for you to uh, get out the dirt of the hole. That's why I use this little shovel here. It's really nice because it can like go into a 90 degree angle. So I just put this in. And then I just make the dirt loose in the hole. Put it on the shovel. Just lift it out like that. So that's quite nice. But yeah, not everyone has this shovel. Just have to find a way to get the dirt out of the hole. So, yeah, what I would also recommend is choosing a day when it, the, the floor is not too dry. It's nice when it's like very moist and uh, the dirt sticks together, then it's way, way easier to get all the dirt out. Because if it's like dry, it will always fall back into the hole and uh, yeah, it's just out of experience. That's like almost half a meter, I think that's good enough. Another thing you want to do now is like you want to go around and find stuff that is very like, I don't know, some metal pieces that are uh, rusty or that you don't want to use anymore. Just like things that you can dig into the floor that later on can't be pulled out. So it needs to be something that is really like has a big surface and cannot be ripped out very easily. For example, we could, we could now nah, we could take this bench, no, not really. I've been looking around all over and like the best thing, in my opinion right now, that I found that I can dig into the floor is this bicycle here. Um, I'm gonna take the metal saw and just like rip it in pieces a little bit, but maybe, um, yeah, we can make it a bit smaller so it fits in the hole. That's my old bike. I'm gonna deep build the tires and try to make it as small as possible. Yesterday it got dark so I couldn't film anymore. So I'm gonna just continue now. What I'm doing, I'm trying to use later the wheel as a big surface to put it in the floor. And then just that this wheel is a bit stronger, I will just like squeeze in some metal pieces like that. Somehow, like that. And let's see if it works. Yeah, 
I attached all these little metal pieces from the bike onto the wheel so everything gets a bit more strong and solid and uh, yeah now I will attach the sling I wrapped around the sling and I can hold it like that so this will go in like that later and then you can pull it like that so I digged in a little crack so the sling comes out in the right angle and now all I gotta do is fill up the hole wow now once the dirt is in we have to like really compress the dirt into the hole so it's really nice and tight there we go anchor one done one little thing I didn't show you, in my garden I have a hut and this hut is put in the ground with this little stump here and this we could technically also use as an anchor um, we just have to make sure that this is like solidly put in in the floor if it's uh, put in with concrete even better um, yeah it's always good to find out this kind of information but I want to show you how to do it uh, with a ground anchor anyway so that's why I'm not gonna do it with this one you just have to do the second anchor exactly the same way. Upsala. All right, now we have to find something that we can use to get the height of the slackline, like where we can rig the slackline over. And yeah, something like a box or a very strong box or something. I found something here that might work for one side. So we could use um, these little stumps but I find them a little bit too like unstable. They might fall very, very fast. So, but here I found something that actually might work. It's a very old oven. So that could work pretty well as an A-frame actually. Depending on how long your anchors are apart from each other, you will need more or less power to get the line tight enough so, you, so the line doesn't touch the ground. And in my case, it's quite big distance is like 23 meters but later on you can make it shorter with the a-frames and that's why i also grabbed myself a power ratchet you can also get this on the gibbon web shop power ratchet and a pair of sling and shackle which is over there and yeah you will see it later i found this nice little wooden flock so i will use that as a second anchor on this side because this side is a little bit lower, so I need a little bit of a higher anchor, uh, a higher A-frame than on the other side. We need our ratchet, a shackle, put this through here, put the loop of the ratchet here and close the shackle. There we go. We got one end of the line, put it through the ratchet, and then we leave a little bit out. So and then we put the webbing under the pin through the ratchet. And then on this side we pull all the slack through and then we can pre-tension a little bit not so tight just a little bit we can put a bit of tension on the line without the a-frames and then we can really like adjust it a little bit and now we know exactly where the line will cross our garden so we know where to place our A-frames. So I'm just uh, wrapping uh, a piece of wood. I wrap it with a little bit of tree pro. Then I can lift the line over and then have already quite a good tension on the line. And then 
line. We can put a bit more tension on the line. Always make sure to close your ratchet correctly. So you pull this back and pull it all the way down. And then this handle needs to lock behind the teeth. I forgot to mention three things. First is many people have only a classic line at home, means one ratchet and one webbing like this with a loop at the end. This one you attach like that. Another question I get very often is how do I set up uh, the classic line with two ratchets because uh, one side I can put in easily because it has no loop but the other side has a loop. How can I put it into the ratchet? Um, for that you just have to let's uh, assume this is a, a ratchet and then we can just put it through the first ratchet one end and then we take this end to the other side and we put it through the same end through the other ratchet. And I also wanted to say that you can build your anchor in the ground also with a piece of wood, like that. That works also pretty well. But this wood will rot after a few years, so I took metal because I wanted it to last it forever, but this is also a really good option. Depending on how long you want your slackline, you can move this A-frame this way or this way to shorten or lengthen the line. So if you're just beginning to slackline, if you want to learn how to walk, if um, you have children and so on, then I would recommend to have the line quite low over the ground. So that's why I have this box. So we can, even with the tension on it, we can just lift the line down. Then remove this one here. And then the line. It's just like about knee height, which is perfect to start slacklining. I just put a little bit of tension on the line. You can see it's quite tight and our anchor is still strong enough. It comes out nicely out of this hole. And I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, this was my tutorial on how to rig a slackline in your garden with what you can find at home during quarantine time. And yeah, this is just the way I do it. Maybe there's like way more elegant ways to do it, but I don't know. I found this idea with the tire pretty all right and it worked for me and it was a lot of fun for me to rig. If you can't go out, if you can't go to the store to buy stuff, um, maybe this is a good way to do it. And yeah, just use whatever, whatever you have. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time.